The Spin-Off Podcast Network. This is Kiwi is back for a brand new season with more inspiring kōrero from special guests including rugby player, father and role model TJ Peronara. My family bring me joy. Rugby brings me joy too, but it's not the same joy as my family brings me. And global dancer and choreographer Kirsten Dodgen. For some reason people think I'm very intimidating. Listen to the new season of This Is Kiwi, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network in collaboration with Kiwi Bank. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. Over 25 years ago, on September 29th, 1998, we watched a brainy girl with curly hair drop everything to follow a guy she only kind of knew all the way to college. And so began Felicity. My name is Juliette Littman, and I'm a Felicity super fan. Join me, Amanda Foreman, who you may know better as Megan, the roommate, and Greg Grunberg, who you may also know as Sean Blunberg, as the three of us revisit our favorite moments from the show and talk to the people who help shape it. Listen to Dear Felicity on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. Kia ora, welcome along. To, oh, we haven't done it. We didn't do a funny at the beginning. It was, I feel like the way you sang kia ora was pretty cool, and that's funny enough. Why did I do it wrong? You, sort no, of you sang just, it. You sort of like Broadway. It's like I imagine like the how the champagne lady would if she would ever speak a word of Taro. That's how she would just bring it. <laughs> oh, that, that is not a compliment. I feel like she would say kia ora. That's true. But she would sing that kia ora. Let's just come in hot. Okay. Kia ora. Welcome <laughs> along to The Real Pod. Stop laughing at me because I sing my, my kia ora. It's, it. it's fine. It's happy and I'm trying to make everyone feel excited about the podcast ahead. Okay? That's working. My name is Jane Yee. I'm joined by Duncan Grieve. Hi, Dunk. Kia ora. And also by corny extraordinaire Stuart Simon Lund, also the spin-off live d- updates editor. But Hello. Yes. more importantly, corny extraordinary. And you got my last name correct this time. And Possibly the first time ever. I know, but don't worry, because I'll say your name at the That's end of, fine. The, end of yeah. the podcast and I'll yeah. get it wrong there. This is your reality TV recap and real life in New Zealand podcast. We are going to be recapping week four on The Bachelor NZ. And by my reckoning, probably it's all over next week. Yeah. Yeah. I think. That's a, I got a press release about that. Oh, okay. It is literally officially ending. Oh, my goodness. It's been a whirlwind. But let's start off with some real news. Okay, so real news is just one little thing for the real news this week, and it's batch-related. So Sam, remember she had her 30th birthday, and a whole bunch of the bachelorettes went down to New Plymouth. And celebrated with yes. her. We talked about that last week. She's actually found love since being on Batch. She's been keeping it on the DL, but she revealed all to stuff. And in the article, she revealed that from the time she flew up to take part in The Bachelor and Z to the time she got kicked off, she was there for eight days. <laughs> Hold on. So remind me who Sam is. Sam is the one who jumped out of the bushes. Oh, yeah, she was on it for oh, right. freaking ages. You know, well, yeah, but eight, eight days. days in total. Is that not insane? There's something, I mean, there's not something, there's so many things off about this season that I want. I was saying to Alex Casey, who is she back at the spin off, which is freaking <laughs> excellent, that I really wish that we, there could be some like parallel universe where we were resourced up and could just go, I want to do like a massive data visualization project on all New Zealand bachelors, chiefly because. Obviously, the days to pash graphs yeah. would be uh, would be like fascinating for this yeah. season. Yeah, but there's clearly like a whole lot of like like the number of self eliminations. Yeah. which we'll get to is crazy on this. Like it probably equals prior You've seasons like combined. Ticked off all of my notes for this for these three episodes already, <laughs> <laughs> and that was the real part. <laughs> I, I, I apologize for that, but um, great minds. But yeah, there was just the the, the this has been made. In a haste, in a compressed time period, both in terms of weeks, but also within each day. Like, there has been no... We have never seen darkness. No, it's so bonkers. I think, like, when you think Sam was there for a decent amount of time, she was only there for eight days. That, I mean, it must be in total... Slurpy McSlurps in. Is it? Yeah. 
It sounded real good, yeah, though. Fix, That's fix right. <laughs> Absolutely can't. <laughs> um. Noting. <laughs> Duncan Slurp. Five minutes, three seconds. <laughs> That's Jonathan, by the way, our lovely producer. I like uh, the slope as a ringtone. That'd be quite cool. No. Nope. <laughs> anyway, so like, two weeks probably they're filming, and to, in Moses' defence, he's very delayed with the kissing and any relationship connection whatsoever, but that's a short amount of time to, like, fall in love with someone. So we kind of got two seasons for the price of one with I Bachelorette. Mean, they, they definitely and, did. Literally because they probably filmed them almost back to back as well, I imagine. Well, we know they did because a they picked up in the same location where Lexi yes, gave out her course. final rose as the mansion for the bachelor and the cameos season. as well. The cameo from Paul, who was a bachelor. The, there's just the, the, they, but I think the budget must be the same, right? Because I think last season, uh, you know, the Argentina season clearly had as many episodes or, or close to as many episodes. And certainly they had those long episodes as well. Like the total minutes yeah. of this, for, you know, it feels like they've crammed two into one, which that one was too long. There was a big old sprawl. These are just so frantic that you don't feel like anything, you know, anything's actually been given a chance to happen. Hard disagree. That one was perfect. What? Yeah, it was great. We were in Argentina for what seemed like three years. It was nice. I mean, maybe I'm just looking through rose-coloured, can't travel any more glasses, but I'd love it. I'd love some time in Argentina. Some time. <laughs> but just think back to the TV3 seasons of The Bachelor, if we're allowed to talk about them in the same sentence as the TVNZ editions. But they, we certainly can. <laughs> we are They we're felt independent. like they went on for years, but I sort of yearn for that because it meant that not only do, did I believe that the relationships on the show were legitimate, but... I actually knew who these people were by the end. Do you know all their names? Or are you still struggling to name them all? Yeah, definitely. Could I? Not really. Wow. Co- current bachelorettes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying because that to me that's a bit of a litmus test. Is but like not like how far along you are in the season versus how many people's names you can recall. Let's move on because we're going to be talking more about batch very very soon. Let's take a wee step into the community notice board. It's the community notice board. Okay, this came via the Real Pod Corner. Surprise, surprise. By the way, if you want to join the Real Pod Corner, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Real Pod Corner. Seems a bit easier to get into these days. It's very easy to get into these days. Uh, Alex and I did a Married at First Sight recap podcast last week where she talked about a corny approaching her in the wild and saying, I'm a corny. And I'm sorry. And so we said, if you want to get in the corner, you can just answer, just say that as your uh, <laughs> as your que- as your answer to the very difficult question, which is why you want to be here. And uh, and we did. We had some people do that. It was really cute, yeah. and I loved it. So you're in. But I must. We used to get some crazy answers that were completely incorrect to those questions. Yeah, but I it know. gave me a lot of enjoyment. Can can read them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You can be as creative and clever as you like. Yep. We'll let you in. Okay, so this is a, a community notice board from the Upper Hut community page. Idealistic flatmates wanted. I'm looking for mature people to share a house with. Fine. I would like our house to be more friendly than just a place where people live solitary lives. I'd like to have flatmates who encourage each other to become better people, preferably interested in conservation. I'm not, I feel like conservation or conversation. Drama, having fun, juggling, fire eating. I want our household to be welcoming to visitors, including couch surfers, and I'd like to have flatmates committed to spending at least one evening together each week prepared to discuss religion, politics, and other values. I consider myself a Christian, but I can tolerate people with other belief systems as long as they don't mind talking about them. Where is this wonderful household? I don't know yet. I've lived in Upper Hutt most of my life, and I hope to stay in touch with friends here, but I have friends in other cities too. At this stage, I'm looking for a household. Next, we'll seek a house. Wow. Intense, right? Yeah, I've just... So this actually, we're talking about this off um, pop, but it is, I've confirmed that this is the same person that posted in the Upper Hutt community page at the start of the year where they mentioned that one of their flatmates could be hostile to women. Oh, yes, I remember that. Yes, this, is, this is the sequel to that. Oh, that's right. Well, Has this-, this been covered by the news media? Uh, I mean, obviously, this is, like, right now. Yeah, we're breaking this story. <laughs> I mean, this is, like, the fact that those two things are linked is... Yeah, so... And, and Maybe we should the... cut this out and... <laughs> we're not cutting it out. Put it on the... Inter- no, no, we're already Look, I, w- I, I won't timestamp it because then that will give away my source because I have a screenshot. But earlier this year, the, the same individual posted saying that they were living in a house with four men and they wanted someone to join and one of the flatmates could, could be hostile to women. Now... <laughs> 
<laughs> presumably gotten himself out of that yeah. horrible flirting now, situation yeah. and now looking for something much more harmonious as a result. Yeah. He's discovered, what, like in relationships, he's broken up and realised what it is he truly wants. And Fire he, eating and fi- conservation. Quite specific. But but it, drama? Like which, which sense of the word are we talking? I feel like maybe plays. So not, <laughs> not misogyny. <laughs> not misogyny. I mean, we could do with some drama on that, please. Um, I really I, I wish this person well. Uh, I hope they find exactly what they're looking for, and then I hope they find a house because ultimately... There's not a lot going around. I, <laughs> it feels <laughs> real ambitious to assemble the household with the ticking clock of needing somewhere to live given the old multi-year crisis we have in that front. Sorry, it's not gone by lunchtime. Let's move on. It's not gone by lunchtime. It's also not when the facts change. Oh. Yeah, which is a new podcast on the Spin-Off Podcast Network. You might have heard of it. You might have seen it at number one on the Apple Podcast channel. For like days on end. Days and number days. Number two now, but is that's it? pretty good. Yeah, we'll get back there. That's almost number one. It is. Anyway, you should go and subscribe and get it back to number one. It's a fascinating listen. It's very accessible. It's it's your mate Bernard Hickey. Yeah, I had Bernard Hickey on the fold sort of two-thirds of way through last year it was a strange podcast because I would like ask him a question and then 15 minutes later he'd still be talking like he essentially did his own monopod on my podcast and that was essentially the germination of it like the, the, the feedback I got on that like the crazy joined up like I know how the whole system is made layers down into it stuff that Bernard brings with him and just like a crazed passion for everything from debt funding and 10-year uh, bond, uh, you know, like payment uh, repayment schemes and, and the relationships between them and so on. And yet somehow, like, still having a sense of humour about it and making it accessible. Like, he's a very singular talent, and so we, we were stoked to get him. And, and I'm very pleased, and I think it's absolutely worthwhile, like, like appropriate that there's been such an awesome response to this podcast because there's it's not just there's nothing like it. There could be nothing like it because there is only one Bernard Hickey. There is only one Bernard Hickey. So go and subscribe, rate it, review, give a corny dab if you like, um, all about it. So that's when the facts change and you can find it on your favourite podcast provider. I promise you'll love it. Okay. Shout out to Jonathan for a hell of an edit on it. Hell too. of an edit. Let's get into reality check. I am disgusted at how much you have copied my husband. <laughs> you just bought it. Don't even Reality Okay, we are now going to talk Batch. And we're going to start with Devony, who was um, looked like she was going to leave, and then she left. Gone. Done. Move on. Yeah. One on one with Negan. So they go sailing, and I'm really sick of the water by this point. Yes. So much water activity. It well, did. Oh, I was just going to say, they did say, I think it was in this episode or the next one, they basically admitted that the, the weather was bad, so they had to change all the dates, which I just thought was like a classic, classic yep, I, music. I, I think the, the problem is the weather was bad, so they changed the date and went to pottery. If she wasn't going to, if Lana didn't go to the pottery date, well, she would have been water. on the bloody water. I promise you that now. Yeah. The, the other thing is when the weather's bad and you still go out on the water anyway, it looks horrible. Like yeah. fundamentally, the water doesn't glisten and shine. It just looks like everyone's a bit cold. It's yeah. just like it's just not good television. And look, far be it from me. I don't know exactly how to make good television. The shout out to Lee Ralph, half a million views. Viewers can't be wrong. But like it, it just like that's what happens when you compress it into a tight time frame. You have no contingency. No. So you whatever you shoot goes in. And sometimes it's grey and overcast, and they look a bit cold and like they're tired. And like they're having a kind of terrible time. But um, we did get the incredible hug high five moment out of that date. Oh, I mean, she she gave <laughs> high fives to Martin, who was yeah. skipper on the boat. <laughs> and then Moses is there, like, trying to give yeah. her a high five. And she, that was a beautiful little comedic edit. A little edit. zoom in. Yeah, where she just left him hanging and for, like, a very long, long time. But, I mean, Moses was just giving her really powerful signals that he wasn't into her. So it's mm. quite natural that she would... You know, a red a, a blooded Forget male. that he was there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I reckon he could be the next bachelor. Martin. Yeah, it's a good contender. I, reckon. I feel like Art's trying to be the next bachelor. To be honest with you. And he, yeah, succeeding. Oh my god, the wrong. Yeah, someone the casted wrong. him before. I mean, some great talent there. <laughs> Give um, that man a poll. They have like a two out of ten chat. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's generous. <laughs> the thing is, Negan is cool. Like, I yeah. reckon Negan might be the best bachelorette on the whole show. And the fact that Moses is just like, mm, no. It's just no taste either, you know? <laughs> the big mystery for me was when Negan returned from her date 
And all the girls, of course, were very interested to know whether or not she had a rose. And she she walks on to the lawn um, holding a brown paper bag. And they're all like, have you got a rose? Have you got a rose in there? She's like, no, it's just some merchandise. And then nothing more said. And again, I want to know what's in the bag. Legitimate what? merchandise or just like a cheap bottle of clean skin? or I feel like it's probably uh, like a, a cap from <laughs> from Martin's boating company. <laughs> what's that name? <laughs> just, just some tag. Something to remember him by. <laughs> Maybe her merchandise was uh, Martin's digits written on the inside of a brown paper bag. What, what, did the fight between uh, Lydia and Annie happen simultaneously? Like, was it interspersed? Yeah, it was. I just Can we talk I'd, about that oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just thought I'd wrap up the date and then we'll, we'll talk about what the girls got up to while There's Negan was on their date. nothing to say about that date. There's nothing to say. That fight was the first time that I wrote down, and I wrote it down about five times throughout these three episodes, but just simply, why do so many people want to go want to self-eliminate <laughs> this season? Because that didn't take long for Lydia to just be like, I think I want to go home now. But was that was that Annie actually playing a real smart and long game, which was like, I feel like if I dominantly <laughs> wrestle Lydia to the <laughs> ground, she will feel so, like, transgressed upon that she'll just want to leave? I think Lydia and Annie have a friendship, and I think Lydia was in a real grump. Because <laughs> at what point did it progress from a, a, just a chill play fight into... Let's push your face into the concrete and then decide that that's when I want to leave the show. I my take is that Lydia, I'm kind of an Annie fan, best of a bad bunch kind of a, an Annie fan. No, Annie, no, Annie, no actually, like Chanel's cool, but I like I'm an Annie I'm an Annie fan. Oh, Lou's cool as well, actually. Well, they're, they're all cool. It's just they're all just. Basically... I don't like Lydia though, <laughs> so no, I no, quite Lydia, like. No, I like Lydia. Lydia. Okay, well that's fine. I think that Lydia and Annie are mates. They got into a play fight, and Lydia is overreacting to a whole bunch of stuff this week. But she got her face smushed into the concrete. Now who hasn't had look, their face smushed but, but, into I the mean, concrete? But I mean, look, you're two adults, right? Technically, yeah. So, how often do you like play fight to that level with your mates? I would have probably, <laughs> when I was that age in that environment, on a concrete floor. Sure. Right. Okay. okay. Like I've done Probably. it on like like stag do's, <laughs> which is quite a specific environment, <laughs> well, and I guess it's not a thousand miles no. away. Anyway, but generally not for national TV. Yeah. Also, though, let's not forget that Lydia didn't want to do the dishes, and that's that's a wrestleable face smush in the. Lydia doesn't want to do a lot of, of things. Yeah. She was having a bad time. The only like, and this whole thing was just kind of bleak. But um, at least we got a classic. The, the the New Zealand reality TV classic of the the door shot. What was the door shot? You know, just like a shot of a door while while some like sobbing or fighting oh, or yeah. whatever oh, happens yes, on the other side. Yes. To the point where like they actually had a lot of shots on the other side of the door. Did they just give us the door shot as like an Easter egg because they know I love the door shot? Yes, I think they did. <laughs> we'll just do this for you. Duncan. <laughs> just for me. Okay, good. That was Alex Casey's influence I hope behind so. the scenes. <laughs> okay, so there was a talent show. This was a group date. Um, it was an open brief. Has to be original. You can do whatever you want, but it has to be original. The two things I noted first was art saying that juggling is not a talent. I would arguably say it definitely is a juggling talent. Juggling is absolutely a talent. Didn't you? That was tried. something you learned. Yeah, I tried. That season when I did the splits. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, none of us actually achieved any of the things we set out Which to probably do. proves that juggling is definitely a talent, and that was a big call. Thank totally. You. It yeah. absolutely is a talent. Can I ask you what you guys would do in this situation? Because I was like, oh, these are all quite lame. And then I was like, oh, no. What the yeah, fuck would I, I do? Ha- I've got nothing. I can turn my eyelids inside out. That's 100% a talent. Definitely if this a was talent. a visual pod. I'd be doing it. Yeah. Do you want to see it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, actually, I don't. I don't? really want to spew. <laughs> okay, I won't do it. Because I don't want you to spew. Yeah, I feel like that would be bad. I can burp on command too, but again, that's not really. Yeah, do it. That's an audio I don't want to do that. No, I'm not doing that. No. We'll cut it. Okay, okay. We'll bleep okay. it. We'll bleep it. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. Bleep it. Okay. Oh, that one went down. Oh, no, no, that didn't even come out. That didn't even come out. Wait, here I go again. Whoa. I can feel it. Please the Those are really like raw burps. <laughs> So it's like an after pizza. <laughs> you wait till I've had like some fizzy. Okay, off the charts. can I go do a counterpoint on this? I I, I totally agree that um, it's terrifying. The idea of you've got an hour. It must be original. Huh? I actually thought they were all amazing. Oh, I mean, hmm. like Annie has got a, is a crazy dancer. Lou is an excellent dancer. The the that's the, true. 
Shanae's I dressed up as Moses thing was yeah, a bit was... desultory. I, I kind of think Lara's song was... Lana. Well, well you say Lana and I say Lara. <laughs> Tomato, you know tomato. I, mean? <laughs> um, I like she kind of crushed that. It was so brave, and she was so exposed. So embarrassing, though, because oh my god, yeah. Can but... you imagine? She was that embarrassed at the time, and then she has basically spent the last however long it's been between shooting and airing in terror. Basically, at that moment. stress burping. Yeah, stress burping <laughs> like an absolute maniac, which I can totally relate to. Yeah, I thought they were all good. I would say probably the the most talent was Lydia's crying. Oh, yeah. So that was the I other thing. I felt bad for Lydia. Like, she was actually having an episode and they were shooting an episode. <laughs> so. I, I just. Uh, it was the best performance of the bunch, though. She, Com- compared to the lads. Do you remember, like, the, the lads on The Bachelor? Yeah. Who had coaches. Eating the egg. Who had, like, yeah. a fancy coach. And just so indescribably awful. Like, but shouldn't be allowed out of their That homes. was the episode, the last episode of the pod I was on. And you, you basically said it could be the fact that the coaching was really terrible, which. Possibly is now proven that really Melody Bracewell is to blame. She's the problem. <laughs> <She's to laughs> Sorry, blame. Mel. <laughs> Can we talk about Sinead's, um belief in herself when she did the the, the poem as Moses, and she was like, and her in the moment, she's like, the words just flowed, and it was really funny. I mean, I'm all for propping yourself up. She's got a very strong psychic wall. She <laughs> she really does. Uh, that was. Um, I mean, it wasn't that funny. No. It was no. easily the worst. It, it was definitely not funny. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, so Lydia's having an absolute meltdown because she doesn't want the, the talent show is just completely freaking her out. What did she, what did Chanel, what did Coco do? Oh, Chanel did a joke. She did a... Oh, and I thought that was, like, weirdly okay. What would you do, though? What would you do, Duncan? I think I'd make a speech. Oh, my God. Mm. Okay, this is really embarrassing, right? But But that's basically the only thing I sort of plausibly have. I think that juggling is more skillful than writing a speech. Yeah, but I can't juggle. Okay, what would you do, Stu? Um, if I if I didn't cry and hide away, I would. I was thinking about it, and I was going. I'd probably try and do something like, like funny, like try and do a poem speech comedy skit. I feel thing. like I could do like a, a comedy song. Yeah, we you sort of like because I feel like on these shows, or maybe it would work more when it's like a bunch of like rowdy, annoying lads, but I feel like the sort of singling out people and making fun of them in a kind of tasteful way usually gets quite a good response, unless you're terrible. But if you, even if you're passably funny, if you're amongst your peers, they yeah. usually just crack up So like everything. a light roast. Yeah, basically. I don't know if that's a talent, though. That's the thing. Talent is so broad. It is. It, I think, is it a talent? Yeah, absolutely Talking. It is. Not as talented as being able to do a Rubik's Cube, which or I can. So juggling. That would be my Or Rubik's, burping. Rubik's Cube. Rubik's Cube. Really? I yep. mean, I just would not go on the show <laughs> because there's a danger that that might happen. And I think they need to think <laughs> about the fact that to win someone's love, you have to be comfortable humiliating yourself uh-huh. at an hour's notice on national television. And also bungee jump. Like, why do that? Do you think burping or speech writing is more of a talent? What, what would you say? Who, who would win if it was... If you two Jonathan, are face-to-face. who would win out of a speech from Duncan or a, a good solid fizzy burp from me? I don't think you can go on TV and just do a speech. Yeah, yeah I you, know, you, you can do a speech while like uh, while unicycling. I'll like, accept basically, that. Basically, I do a monopod. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> About okay. the state of the New Zealand yeah, media. Yeah, like and and, and in so doing, ensure that none of it made the air. Ah, uh, that's quite smart. So. But they would have what they would have done is done a, a, a back shot to the rest of the cast with crickets, like. Yeah, All and I'd be fine thing. with that okay. as long as it was none of my sound. But we should cut enough, this whole thing out. I'm about, feeling like I'm, I'm, I'm cold sweating. Uh, enough uh, about saying. us. It's not actually about us, believe it or not, especially when we're about to go what we're into what we're about to go into, which is uh, Lana and Annie both winning the competition, going for a walk as a threesome, and then Lana suggesting they split the time with Moses, which Annie was kind of surprised about but seems to make complete sense to me. Annie went first, talked about having anorexia as a teen, and that's why she had to stop dancing, which is pretty heavy. Fucking heavy. Mm. And then you're like, whoa, that was heavy. And then Lana comes and has a chat and talks about how her first love committed suicide. And that's obviously extremely heavy as well. And there's just so much tragedy amongst these, yeah, these women. They're it's, carrying weight. It's, cr- it's just crazy. It feels like... Um, I don't know. 
it must be so hard to kind of do that with cameras on and that kind of thing, and then it must be hard for Moses to know how to handle that. It's Which just a lot. He doesn't seem to know what to do. What I would thought, you, though? Would you know what to I do? I thought Moses came out of those interactions quite well, and I think it possibly speaks to the the, the sort of time timing schedule that we were talking about before, but maybe that's why neither party really knew how it had turned out. Like, the next day, wasn't it, one of them was like, I thought that conversation went terribly, and he was like, no, it didn't. I think it was like, yeah. they just don't really know each other well enough to no. know how to handle these situations. But they, they have to go and say that stuff ahead of time because, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, that, that, it was a very sort of, you really got a sense of just how fast they're trying to make time pass Yeah, during this episode, including down to, you know, when they had that conversation with Moses at the cocktail party and, and he was, they, they sort of asked him, oh, you know, will you, what's your intentions with the winner? And he's like, who says there's going to be a winner? And then you see Annie just fully kick off. Like, why are we here then? What What's the point? Like, Fair. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, sound, it sounds like he is prepping them for that. That's mm. what, when someone sort of drops that in, it's just a, oh, by the way, there's a chance that this. And But that would mean th- two out of three <laughs> seasons of the TVNZ show have had no winner. <laughs> well, I suppose Lily chose someone, but like. Right. If, if he didn't choose one. Yeah, I mean, the, the track record in general is not great. Yeah. <laughs> across the entire franchise, across the entire world. To be fair, they've only been there for like nine and a half days. <laughs> they have, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, in between all of that, we also got the, the flashback to the flashing, which was a little, little bit of light, light humour. Oh, yeah, L- that, well, that was at the, the cocktail party. Moses actually revealed Lydia's reveal to the <laughs> yeah. other girls because she hadn't spoken about that with them. Yeah. So Moses kind of... I don't know if it was a, the great secret, but he revealed it. And then someone asked if it was a nip slip. And Moses was like, no, it was the opposite. <laughs> the op- I mean, is that the opposite? Is, is that the opposite? Just as I'm the other. I'm trying to picture that. What's the opposite of a nip? Covering up your nipple would be the yeah. opposite, <laughs> yeah. I would have thought. So I'm currently doing, <laughs> to be clear. <laughs> uh, after Moses has said that he might not choose anyone at the end, I found it like weird. And it shouldn't be. But I found it weird when Annie referenced Art and Matilda. It's like the dream. Like that, I just found it weird in like a weird inception kind of a way. Like, oh, yeah. oh, they, oh they're like aware of this other thing. <laughs> and the dream of how it could be. Surely Brett and Angel was, should be the archetype for like wrong, the per- wrong show. I know, but it's like that's, that's the, the Well, that should be the aspirational yeah. for, for regular people. Yeah. 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 But it is... You know, haunting to think that 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 is. If they're in there thinking that's what I'm going to get, then hello, disappointment. <laughs> I really want those Colgate commercials. Can we can we get to episode ten and what I consider to be the most emotional exchange of exchange of the whole se- series? What's it? Which one's episode ten? We have got to talk about the pottery date and all that. Is that that episode? That, that, that is that is. Uh, is that on this episode? Okay, well, first of all, we're just the cliffhanger for that ep- ep was that uh, Lydia was having doubts and she's struggling. And then we begin the, with the rose ceremony and Moses convincing Lydia to stay, which took, like, nothing at all for him to do that. But at the rose ceremony, like, I think Negan says, I love you to Lou, and Lou says, I love you too. And it's, like, really touching. You're like, oh, oh that's what... Emo- like genuine, deeply felt emotion looks yeah, like. Yeah, totally forgot. We are ten <laughs> episodes deep, and this is the first time I've glimpsed it on on this season. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I love that that friendship between Negan and Lou. Um, and now we have it no more because Negan's, Negan's gone. gone, gone. Single date goes to Lana. L- Lydia's getting pissed because she hasn't had a single For date, so she writes Moses's name <laughs> on an orange and throws it off a cliff. This is the second best citrus situation. <laughs> it is, yeah. Of of the whole franchise, and the only thing you could say is whether Chanel and Lou eating some lemon and trying to keep a straight face, which is also a strong contender. But I think the the the, the orange held into the void was was yeah very good. with the sort of horror movie soundtrack behind it. It was very sort of psycho. <laughs> and the significance of the orange was that Moses had given the orange to her. It was a special orange. It was a special orange. Which we all, I think we all, we all have one of those, right? <laughs> um, I don't. Do you have no. a special orange? I thought, thought we all... <laughs> I mean, when, when you're angry, you, you write their name on it. And I thought that, that, thought that that's normal. That's a thing. Yeah. That's a thing. You know, Lana goes and does some pottery with, um, with Moses and... 
she's feeling a bit uncomfortable. She's probably the least kind of um, open to just like getting it on with Moses, right? Lana is... Like she's the most normal. Yeah, like Lana's the one that you'd be like, oh, yeah, I, I could hang out with Lana. Yeah. And therefore you can sort of see... I, I, I just fundamentally am like, apart from the fact that he's like insanely good looking and fundamentally a good person, how could she possibly be into him? There's such different people that it doesn't seem reconcilable. Yeah, yeah. So I think where the other women are like, I want a relationship with this guy, she's like, would be great to get to know you a tiny bit. Well, here's, you know? the, here's the question. Is Moses cheesy? Well, corny, as they said. I had picked up how many times they said corny. And, in fact, um, corny cup of cringe was, <laughs> <laughs> was in the voiceover. Yeah. And I was like... That's insulting. To yeah, it doesn't it doesn't sound like someone doesn't sound like your forever love. No, they did. They reenacted the ghost, the yeah. famed ghost scene, where Patrick Swayze goes up behind Demi Moore and they they pot a, they pot they, what, they, what, what do they do? They pot a wheel together, and Moses went around Lana did it, did it touching her hands, and she just found it all off, you know. And I think when she's like, he's a bit cheesy, he's a bit corny, I think she also feels that that was probably like not really a reflection of where they're at. He's just yeah. like doing the bit for the cameras and I'm sure that that's a little bit jarring for her as well. Um, then they sit down and have a, um, a little, you know, like their crackers or whatever and they're just <laughs> like, their date is in just inside the pottery shop. <laughs> and as, I think this was the moment where I thought um, if the champagne lady was watching, she'd be very unhappy because Moses appeared to be, unless I was going insane, holding his wine glass by the base. Yeah, he did. <laughs> oh. Which I thought was quite a bold choice. Well, high risk, yeah. low reward. Yeah, I don't think it would make the drinking experience more enjoyable, but it could definitely lead to some embarrassment. Is that a show-off thing? Like, oh, look how I can balance it. Well, he wasn't ba- it was just between his fingers. He was just holding it. Right. <laughs> Isn't that a weird for a <laughs> I kind of love it. <laughs> Lana returns to the house, uh, ex- explains to the girls how she's, like, completely cringed out, and they are not happy about it. Sh- was well, Shanae in particular? Shanae is not happy about a lot of things. No. She reckons that she came up with the pottery date idea because that morning she was like, oh, I wonder if you'll be going doing some pottery. And then Lana, and at the time I was like, don't be ridiculous. Of course they haven't just, like, decided because you put it in their heads to go into a pottery day. Like, that shit's been organised at least yesterday afternoon. But then when they mentioned about the weather and having to change their plans, I was like, oh, maybe they did. That was quite a good idea. Maybe they did. It's still Sinead's idea. producer thing to do is just to, like, fuck with it. Yeah. Um, And fuck with her it did, by the way. Yeah. And she, she, she is very much, like, in kind of playing... Offense kind mm-hmm. of mode mm-hmm. whenever she has some time with it. Also, while they were out on their date, I just don't know if you clocked that, that delicious roast. Mm. But how good. What? Are you <laughs> no, looking, just... looking your lips over there? <laughs> I was just thinking. I was just thinking back. I couldn't quite, I can't remember sort of thinking about it in the same way that you clearly did. I get very distracted by the food <laughs> on these shows. And I just, I love a roast. Well, was was that KFC one. meal in the next episode? Was yeah, that the that most was that was like intense, like, Full throated, we're doing nothing but this product placement. Dipping the chips into the gravy. <laughs> and they even made like Michael Hill's course, <laughs> like reanimating for Jordan season, seeing like chill. And I loved how they'd, um, they'd strapped the KFC bag into the like middle seat yeah. in the back of the car. That was an Annie thing, I think. I think it was Annie being cute. When they're, when they're at the house going crazy and doing their um, lemon. Lemon challenge and cinnamon challenge, which I was like when they when they pulled that, I was like, do not a child has died doing that. That is terrible. There should be a don't try this at home warning on that. Why are you laughing? It's dangerous. <laughs> well, it is dangerous, but it just it does tell you something about just how like attention starved, yeah. stimulation starved they are. <laughs> that, they're, that they're just like eating lemons and cinnamon. <laughs> just the cameras are rolling. I better eat this <laughs> unpleasant fruit. Meanwhile, I noticed that Moses and Art are definitely staying in the same accommodation together. Correct. Yeah. And another thing that I noticed um, over this week is that production have reused footage, one of a Suzuki going through uh, like a little rivery type thing. They've used that shot twice in their like showing when they're going from place A to place B. 
And they also used the uh, uh, Moses doing yoga twice and like on two different days. It was like a motif. No, no, like like they used grabs from it, like when they're chatting, like not part of kind of a montage or a setup or anything. Oh, so they're wearing yeah. the same clothes. The same clothes. Oh, Those sure. glasses, like Art was wearing Moses horrible, glasses yeah, with the the, uh, the, the flip up thing. sun lenses. That's not okay. It's not okay. Anyway, let's talk about the pole dancing. Should like write uh, to TVNZ. Let's talk about the pole dancing. Okay. Pole dancing as a group date, horrible idea. Awful. <laughs> For wow. me. I thought great. that. I thought that, and then it was freaking awesome. But it was awesome. great television. This is the, the most enjoyable challenge I've watched. For what, what, what are the reasons? Because it was entertaining, and it was fun, and I don't know. Yeah, it, it felt like it had the, the balance that had been missing of sort of like, it, yeah, like you say, it was funny, but it was entertaining, but also sort of allowed the people to be themselves a bit more. And actually and maybe ding, ding, spend ding. some time with... The well, you know, the at least if you were if you were on yeah. if you were on Moses' team, actually spend some time with them. It read as sexist going into it. It was like, are you kidding me? They're doing pole dancing, but somehow because of the particularly the gusto with which I had approached it, it read totally uh, ungendered. I I felt yeah, yeah pole dancing for all. Uh, there was team Shinani. And Team Schlidia. How did they miss the opportunity to call it Team Shanene? Because that's not actually the mix of their names. I know, but it's okay. more fun. How good was the, the sort of mustard on mustard look that Moses went for? I, I thought that was... Moses like, looks good. He yeah. dresses well. Like He pulls off some fucking very yeah. technical shit. Not, I, not I a lot of scarves. I want to start wearing his wardrobe into the office. Like the, the, the there's like a crimson turtleneck. Oh, yeah. He just, it's high wire stuff, but mostly he makes, he lands it, you know? So, Mark, who was on Art's team? Coco. Coco and Annie. Was it Annie? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, really strong there because Art was amazing and Annie's a dancer <laughs> And then Chanel just gave it everything, and they win. Chanel wins most valued polar. She really, like, being on that team with those two, that was so brave of her to just, like, go in and give it her all. So much. Big fan of Chanel XL. That was whole section, yeah. And her um, her sum joke. Oh, yeah. Damn, that was good. <laughs> I don't think anyone got it, but I was like... Yeah. I got it. Yeah, but, you know, like on the show. I know. Like, I'm just saying I got it. I just want to make sure that everyone <laughs> at home knows that I got it. They have a cocktail party at a winery, um, and Art hits up Moses about not having passed anyone yet. There's been a few kind of opportunities where hey. people have looked like they want to go in for it, but none more so than when he goes for a walk through the vines with Annie. And she's hey. wearing that white thing, that, that white kind of uh, dress thing with the big collary thing that reminds me of, like, 1980s clowns. You know, the <laughs> 1980s clown with yeah. the... There's a great mime going on from thing. Jane oh, right yeah. now. No, no, not it. <laughs> it's like artwork that, like, girls had up on their bedroom walls with, like, Penny a tear. Wise. No, wrong kind of clown. Someone knows what I'm talking about, and it's not you two. Anyway. Ronald McDonald. <laughs> I quit. I'm taking off my headphones. I quit. <laughs> Go on then, you can do the podcast. Okay, so they don't pash. Like Moses just does really intense nuzzling. That's his. His intense nuzzling. Sorry, I'm back. His intense nuzzling is not kiss. It's his not kissing. <laughs> I don't think he intends to nuzzle. He just intends to not kiss, and it ends up nuzzling. It's a lot of arm nuzzling. action. He likes to sort of like put his arm around them instead of like it's like a faux kiss. It's really like it. It feels like. What a, a, a sort of 14, two 14 year olds from like Bible camp <laughs> who'd been told that they could get pregnant if they kissed, what they would do in lieu of intimacy is just like push their heads together and be really horny. That is such a <laughs> And you've like pitched a show I would watch. <laughs> <laughs> like. Shh, keep it down, we don't want to give that one away. Moses talks to Lou, uh, says there's a real familiarity between them, but there's a concern that there might be some friend zoning going on. And then Lydia talks to Moses. She makes it sound like she's going to leave again. So we have the exact same yeah, cliffhanger oh as we had the previous episode with one of the most recent additions to the cast that we're not like so invested in anyway. And we begin tonight's episode uh, with Lydia just heading back to the group like all's good. 
The, and they, they did this kind of back and forth edit. They're like, oh, what could she possibly have said? Oh, the only thing that you would have thought she would have said, there's no bait and switch. It's yeah. just... It's just... Lydia looking puzzled face. Anyway. That's my response. She gets home, sent home, and uh, basically but, she'd said in the vines that he should send her home. And I actually think this was quite a generous play by her. I think this redeemed Lydia in my eyes because if she had waited until he gave her the rose then he would have had to have sent someone else home as well because he couldn't very well go, oh, you weren't who I was going to send home and Correct. I was going to send that person, but now they can stay. Because that person then knows that their, their days are numbered anyway. So who do you think he wanted to send home in the rose ceremony? Was it the one before when there was the self-elimination and it and, uh, was like, or maybe it was the narrator, was like, Moses is the only one he know, who knows who he wanted to send home. Oh, do you I think it know. was probably... Probably Lydia anyway. I think I would fell asleep. I don't think I paid attention <laughs> I, just, at I all. just don't game it out because it feels like Annie is going to win. That's either Annie yeah. or no one. Yeah. Like that's... Or art. I would love it if you could gamble on this stuff. Mind like, you, we said Todd or no one, didn't we, the last season? Hamish won. Yeah, but yeah, well, yeah, 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 no, that's fair. That's a whole, <laughs> that was a whole different kettle of fish. Oh, Todd, I'd love to see Todd. Okay. <laughs> Anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the girls do some partying in the TV room, Annie and Lana specifically, and then Sinead heads out on a single date. They're going, guess what they're going? Guess what they're doing? Is it on the water yoga? It's, on the, it's not just on the water. It's on a fucking paddle board. Which is impossible. But it's just yoga another paddle board? Oh, I'm beginning. Ban paddle boards. I don't, Ban water. I think... TVNZ bought some pedal boards. I think they belong to TVNZ. Sorry, Warner Brothers bought some pedal boards, and they've had to use them. They're just trying to trying to get their money's worth. It's not very that when they like both broke the fourth wall and showed the crew on those pedal boards. You get a really good idea of how close the cameras are and how like not intimate a moment any of these situations are. Explains a lot of nuzzling. Yeah. And I feel like probably Moses is the kind of guy who's not, it's not necessarily doesn't want to kiss anyone. He just doesn't really want to pash on camera. Yeah, but I mean. Wrong show, obviously. Wrong <laughs> show, brother. <laughs> but like, I mean, it's probably been, what, 10 days? <laughs> yeah, by now. Uh, that's true. Yeah. 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 By yeah. now, we've finally made it over to this, and into the, I mean, towards look, the second week. No one, no one's saying it wouldn't be fucking intense. Yeah. To pass someone you barely knew, heaps of people you barely knew on camera with the camera as far away as you are, Jane. But it's the show. Yeah. Okay. Vibing on open relationships in that. Shanae <sighs> so, saying that to, to Moses. When, about about uh, Lana. Lana. Did, does that mean that, like, basically, Lana said you're essentially in an open relationship. Yeah. Is that the sum total of what Shanae is? Because that is some low down and dirty Yeah, I believe from what we saw that's what happened. And I think Lana's obviously gone back and joked about that, about how she joked with Moses that he was in an yeah. open relationship because he's going out with all these women. And then Shanae, she really uh, planned a- this. Like she had a strategy going into how she was going to throw Lana under the bus because she was like, oh, there's so many different types of girls in the house and some are more like you and some of them aren't mm. so much like you. Like Lana, for example, she's like you. You're both into the same stuff. And he's like, oh, really? Weird. Me and Lana are into the same thing. She's like, yeah, you know, you're both into open relationships. But then she was all like, oh, I felt really bad. I threw her under the bus. Yeah, yeah, you did. Mm. Well, also, like... Drove the bus. <laughs> yeah, and, and just, it was, <laughs> there was, no one's watching that going, oh, she she sort of misspoke and that was not intentional. Like, we saw the whole Yeah, thing. yeah. I wonder and if a producer, I don't know, it, felt, it did feel a little, either it was very well planned or it was like, maybe, maybe you need to voice these, voice these concerns. <laughs> the, the main thing to me is that it's, just flat out insane that that Shanae is focusing on Lana as competition when Annie is just dancing away mm. with the title yeah. and there is no one else in the running. Like you're you're sort of not battling for the silver medal in the Moses Olympics. Like just wh- why are you even worrying about this? Look, Annie's the real winner in all senses because while Shanae was on the day, Annie was part of the group who got to go to KFC. You go through the drive through and just get, like, the biggest bag yeah. of KFC you've ever seen. Meanwhile, while Shanae's on her date, she gets, like, a picnic of smoothies and fruit. 
and yeah. it was like the great little weird basket of fruit on the beach. Yeah, the <laughs> like that's, that's, that's it. And then, um, but then Annie gets to go on a single date, which is actually kind of a beautiful date. So they go on a whitewater rafting date. She gets this given the state by default, obviously, because she's a whitewater rafting guide. She has history working in this area. Who gets the, the, to do the job that they're really good at? Well, when you've got a tight budget and you don't want to have to pay for the whitewater rafting instructor, use the girl who is a cast member to do the instructing. So very, it would be worked out very, very well for Warner Brothers. Um, he's a Lord of the Ring fan. They go down some Lord of the Ring place and he loves it. It was like the most personality he'd injected into a date yeah. for quite some time, yeah. seeing him fully geek out about Age of Empires. Yeah, that was cute. And I think that that's a good um, a good date to be on if you if you want to get close to Moses, right? Because he's in his element, he's going to be hyped up, it's exciting for him. And then they ate a meal of just mussels. <laughs> and don't forget that when he had McDonough with Chanel a few, a few weeks back, sorry, a few days ago, they had an entire dinner of oysters. Is this, what is this? Even when they did finally kiss, let's just talk about it. It seemed like a weirdly reluctant, <laughs> yeah. grudgingly given, can we please hide behind a blanket and just get this over with? It, kind did, of it really fish. looked like he was trying to cover that, like stop the cameras peeking in. Yeah, it's, she was really um, quite keen on the kiss and kind of lots of moments of sort of angling herself just so and he didn't, didn't, didn't. And I think he got to the point where he was like, this is inevitable. I just have to i got to do it. Which is what you want to do with your, you know, your one and only. A, rel- yes, a reluctant, yes. forced. <laughs> and I think this reflects it when Annie was like, thank you for being you. And he replied, thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> so transactional. Perfect date. <laughs> Perfect date. It's quite dark out when she gets home. The girls are all freaking out. I mean, we haven't seen night time at all, so this just really speaks to... It's the end of the first day of filming. Yeah, it's the end of the first day of filming. <laughs> Annie, <laughs> Annie clearly is number one with a bullet because she gets to see Moses uh, at the night time. And um, <laughs> Chanel is getting really upset. She's starting to worry about bringing Moses home to meet her family when she barely knows him. And this kind of spilled into the cocktail party where Moses says he's going to send someone home, he's going to do it not in the rose ceremony, but he, he wants to do it in, sort of with a chat uh, pre the ceremony. And so he goes to talks to Lou, figured out their relationship isn't romance, it's like family, I mean, ouch. It's really, really harsh. Yeah. And also, I don't think that's something that you just realise after nine and a half days or whatever. I feel like it's been kind of obvious in terms of the way that he's just not sought her out, that he had that feeling throughout, and I just feel like, I don't know, it seems quite disingenuous. When she watches this back, or when she watched back that very first episode when he was like, uh, Lou, she's fun, she's a great personality, she's the kind of person you, you want to have around, so I'm going to keep her around a long time. That was what he said. So cool. And he did it basically right up to home visits, and he was like... Because she yeah. was invested. Yeah, she, she that's was why it was to harsh. Because, like, all these people had gone, she was still there. Yeah, so rough. Uh, Chanel getting really wobbly at this point, and this is our cliffhanger. Um, it looks like she's going to say she doesn't want to stick around. If that's the case, if she self-eliminates, he's got... It's four. Yeah, he's got um, home visits, like default home visits. Yeah. I mean, look, I don't... I. This has been a very, very, very strange and just kind of like obviously bad to watch season. Yeah. I don't doubt that Moses, like I still think Moses is a good person. Mm. I feel like he is just riven with regret mm. for having gone on this show. He hates the fact that he has to hurt these people's feelings. I think he has like a moral conflict with the very nature of the show. It's it's a weird thing that we're watching here and we're, try, we're sort of discussing it for the most part as if it's like a bad version of the thing, but... The woman seems to be sort of falling mm, apart. Mm. Moses is is almost physically distancing himself from the premise of the show. Like, something's going on here. Yeah. It would be quite interesting to go back and watch him on Treasure Island and see, because I feel like his on-screen persona was different 
than it was. Totally Correct. different. Totally and different. And with this now having seen him on The Bachelor, it'd be quite interesting to sort of see how he actually should be on it's camera. a great point. I suspect he's never watched The Bachelor before. It has that vibe where he kind of didn't really realise what he was getting himself into, and I think the rush nature of the shooting has just meant that none of the things that you would expect to play out over the course of a season is playing out because they literally haven't had enough time together. And not at night either. Just no. I mean, what's going to happen when we get to a fantasy suite? It's going to be at start, starting at four, finishing at eight pm. Yeah, they they go home as soon as it hits dusk. <laughs> uh, okay, and so that's it. That's it. <laughs> I mean, that's not that. it. That's it for this week's <laughs> podcast. Thank you very much, Stuart, for coming in. That's all right. Stuart. Thanks for having me back. It was a, a pleasure. Duncan, thank you. <laughs> Duncan, thank I mean, look, I really enjoyed having Stuart on the show, but there's something about discussing this particular season that is, it's weird, man. It is. It's a little, <laughs> bit, it's a little, bit, it's a little bit like wading through mud, especially because, mm, you know, I love Batch so much. You do. And I don't, I haven't loved this season so much. I think less water, more night time. <laughs> That's exactly it. You've got it in one. You should Good go, notes. You should Good go and produce the next season. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you to the Cornies. And uh, thank you to the spin off members. Catch you next time. Sing, 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 sing. I, know, I love all the singing. Hello for Lover. I'm Madeline Chapman, editor at The Spinner. If you have the means, consider supporting our high quality journalism by becoming a spin off member. Sign up now at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. Kia ora, this is Toby Manhire, here to urge you to tune in to Gone by Lunchtime, a podcast with me, Annabelle Lee Mather, and Ben Thomas, tackling the world of New Zealand politics, from policy to polling, from scandal to psychodrama. Listen to Gone by Lunchtime, brought to you by the Spin Off Podcast Network, wherever good pods are sold. The Spin Off Podcast Network.